Welcome to Champalama Research. I'm your guide, Hedy Young. I've spent the last few years here doing a PhD in neuroscience, and today I'd like to show you around the place. This is a 360 video, so before we start, feel free to look around and get your bearings. When entering Champalama Research, the first thing you see are our group photos, which were taken at our annual retreats. This photo on the left is of our first ever annual retreat, taken in 2007. And this one in the middle is of our most recent retreat. And as these photos show, the Champalama Research community has, in the space of just over 10 years, grown from a few people to nearly 500. And with almost 40 different nationalities, there's a strong and thriving international community built on intellectual and cultural diversity. But despite this rapid growth, the core philosophy remains the same, to help scientists reach their full potential in a collaborative and supportive environment. That's why we actively encourage and foster interactions between our basic, clinical and applied research programs, which focus on neuroscience, physiology and cancer, and experimental clinical research. We will begin our tour at the main neuroscience research section, which is where the first labs were established when the building opened in 2010. One of the distinguishing features of Champalama research is that, unlike many other institutes, all research labs here share the same space and are located in what are known as the open labs, so-called because everything is, well, open. This is where the action happens. And besides the desks and lab benches spread all along the open lab, there are common rooms on the side that the researchers use to prepare and store chemicals for their experiments. Our health and safety unit, together with our chemical safety database, providing information for over 2,000 reagents, help to ensure that researchers work in the safest conditions possible. We have 13 neuroscience groups, and as you can see, there are no walls separating the different labs, and this design facilitates interactions, both social and professional, that create opportunities for collaborations and support across different research groups. From their desks, researchers can enjoy views of a tropical garden below and the Targus River beyond. The labs here mainly work with three different animal models, rodents, zebrafish, or fruit flies, and investigate very different research questions, from how the brain generates movement or keeps track of time, to how it decides what to eat or with whom to mate. Nevertheless, all the labs are united in a common goal, to understand animal behavior and the neural circuits that underlie it. On the floor below us, we have another open lab housing labs dedicated to cancer research tackling wide-ranging topics from early cancer detection to brain cell regeneration. Let's slip into one of the rooms here, which houses a special instrument. In front of you is one of our two photon microscopes, which uses a fluorescence imaging technique that makes it possible to see and record the activity of live brain cells at depths unachievable with conventional microscopy. In addition to deep brain calcium imaging, we make use of many other state-of-the-art imaging methodologies, from applying artificial intelligence and machine learning to cancer imaging, to using ultra-high field magnetic resonance imaging to measure microstructural changes in the brain and understand how they affect behavior. For example, Champalama Research recently partnered with Brooker to develop the world's highest field preclinical MRI system for oncology and neuroscience research. Outside the open lab, researchers often brainstorm on the large whiteboards either side of us, and there are shared meeting rooms for labs to hold their weekly journal clubs or present their latest data. You can relax on the sunlit sofas with a coffee or a paper, and we're fortunate to have plenty of natural light thanks to the transparent high windows above us. Here on the right, we're passing some of the offices of the group leaders, who head the 26 different labs at Champalamo Research. In these rooms, they write and review papers and conduct one-on-one -on -one meetings with students and postdocs, of which there are more than 200. 
In addition to our group leaders, these rooms also host visiting scientists who come from all over the world to work with our researchers on a multitude of different areas. From how the brain can be shaped by our social environment to how it can recover from stroke. Similarly, our researchers regularly visit other institutes to present their work or learn new skills and widen their exposure. Here you can see one of the workshops of the scientific hardware platform, which specializes in electronic and mechanical hardware development. We have many such platforms, which ensure that our researchers have all the scientific and technical help that they need, from gene editing to histopathology, from software to flow cytometry, and much more besides. We're now heading downstairs to the first floor, where the cancer and physiology and experimental and clinical research labs can be found. Every year, Champalama Research hosts an international symposium with keynote lectures from Nobel laureates and distinguished invited speakers, along with specially selected talks and vibrant poster sessions. The theme of these meetings changes every time, and they provide yet another opportunity for our researchers to interact with the broader scientific community. We're now passing many of the offices of the support units on the right. Like the platforms, their role is to make the lives of our researchers easier. They provide all administrative, financial and operational assistance to our research community, whether it be lab purchases or science communication. The pre-award team, for example, provides assistance for funding applications to over 60 different funding bodies, and our investigators have already received over 20 million euros in European Research Council grants alone. Every Friday after work, our researchers take a break here at happy hour and catch up over a drink and snacks. They also hold charity bake sales here as well. And through these glass walls, they can see the Targus River meet the Atlantic Ocean. Perhaps it's not surprising that, surrounded by such natural scenery, we have a strong grassroots movement of over 100 members dedicated to reducing waste production as well as energy and water consumption and to promote environmentally friendly working practices. Our researchers have no shortage of extracurricular activities to choose from, and this makes for an active and dynamic community. For example, researcher-led science outreach initiatives such as our popular R events and in-house magazine open the doors of science to the public with live talks, debates and articles from recent discoveries to the interplay of science and society. On our left can be seen the library and the open lab beyond. Covering two floors, the library provides a peaceful space where you can work in silence undisturbed, analyzing data and writing papers. We have a strong track record in publications, and last year alone, our researchers published over 100 research articles, preprints and reviews. Every year, our researchers receive investigation awards and scholarships based on their work, from the likes of the European Commission's Horizon 2020 program to the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative. At the end of this corridor is the fly room, which along with the fish and rodent platforms comprise the Champalamo Research Animal Platforms. We've now arrived at the fly room, so let's take a look inside. The fruit fly is one of the most powerful and versatile genetic animal models currently available and allows our researchers to combine a wide array of genetic and behavioral tools. As a result, the labs here use them to address a range of questions, from understanding how animals defend themselves when faced with threat, to how the brain knows which nutrients the body needs. This platform's state-of-the-art services include six walk-in temperature and humidity controlled chambers for Drosophila fruit flies, breeding and behavior and even a dedicated, fully equipped kitchen for fly food production. And through the window, you can see the brand new Botton Champalamo Pancreatic Cancer Center, which is the first such center in the world to be dedicated to both research and treatment of this disease. As we wind up our tour of Champalamo research, I'd like to show you a part of the building I've spent quite a bit of time in. Education forms a critical part of Champalamo research, and we're now in the classroom, 
where the students of our International Neuroscience and Physiology Doctoral Program, or INDP, receive in-depth talks by distinguished international faculty during the first few months. Through the classroom's window, you can see the open lab, where all students eventually find their place following a period of lab rotations. But don't worry, if you're interested in joining the INDP, you won't just be attending talks, you'll also have the opportunity to do hands-on research training in the teaching lab. Aside from our PhD program, we also run advanced courses and workshops for graduate students and postdocs, most notably the Kahal Advanced Neuroscience Training Program. Successful applicants to the program also undergo intense training here, lasting several weeks. And this is also where we run high school courses like the Neuronautus, preparing the next generation of neuroscientists. Just opposite the teaching lab, we have the seminar room. In the seminar room, we have guest talks from scientists worldwide. We also hold here the weekly Champelamo internal seminar series, where two of our researchers present their work to the community and receive helpful feedback. These seminars are just one of the ways in which Champelamo research creates an environment where everyone becomes familiar with one another's work, providing opportunities for support and collaboration. We end our tour at a terrace situated right next to the seminar room. From here, you get a wonderful view of the Belain neighborhood of Lisbon, and you can even see the Belain Tower, which was the starting point of discovery voyages into the unknown centuries ago, analogous to the ones our researchers embark upon today. <laughs>